What are your most unpopular opinions about social media slash influencers? If you're watching this video and you're like, when did we submit questions for the Q&A? If you follow me on Instagram, you would know, okay? Everybody submitted the questions on Instagram. I woke up craving Zaxby's real bad this morning. Look at it. Ah! These flies and creepy. I knew it wouldn't be though because I ordered it to the house. No fork? Gosh. It's probably a minor. They not like us. Oh, and I got a side of cane sauce because remember that big cup of cane sauce that I bought, I've been using it like for everything. Okay, I just need one good dip of one good boneless wing into this ranch. <gasps> mm. I'm telling y'all, sometimes barbecue is hitting on something different. Like, hold up. Mm. Please, let me give y'all a close up. What if I dropped it? Yes. Mm. That root beer is crispy. I don't even want to answer the questions. I just want to eat. Oh man. Cane sauce is just like Zach sauce. I don't care what y'all have to say. Mmm. Just please. Yes. Mmm. Okay, let's get to some questions, I guess. That's the point of the video, I guess. Also, if I don't get to your question, I'm sorry. It's just that I got hundreds of responses. I didn't even expect to get that many. And then also, some of the questions that I got, I've gotten them before. So if I don't answer it, like, this is starting off good. It said, what is the best and worst part about being an influencer? Girl, let me have a bite of chicken before I answer this question. <laughs> Actually, it's not even that deep, but no. Mm. Let's start with the worst part. I'll more so say this is the annoying parts of it. So not when you do an ad, that ad gets boosted, meaning that the company that you're doing the ad with is paying to have that ad pushed out on a bunch of different people's For You pages. With that, comes people who don't follow you, like a lot of other people seeing your content that have never seen it before. With that comes a lot of negative and crazy comments and a lot of racist comments. I did an ad recently and because I was eating chicken in the ad, I got some of the craziest racist comments I've ever seen in my life. Hundreds of them on TikTok and on Instagram to the point where I just had to stop opening my mentions. I'm like, I can't even, it got so bad. People are calling me monkey. People are calling me blackie. Get back to work, monkey. This, that, and the third. So many. If I'm doing anything that could be considered stereotypically black in an ad, I almost don't even want it boosted because I'm like, this is gonna get into the wrong hands. And people are, it was to the point where the, the advertiser saw it, they turned off the comment section, but then they started going to my other posts and commenting like crazy racist stuff. I think I kind of have a lot for this. I don't know. It's amazing being able to work with these companies and being able to like do stuff like this, but sometimes the companies themselves are annoying. I've worked with really great companies. For example, I just worked with Panera. Panera is extremely, they were so easy to work with, but I've worked with other companies in the past. They literally don't know what they're doing. Sometimes just their idea for the video. I'm like, this is not what would resonate with this generation. Like they'll be like, oh, we want a Gen Z feel we want a gen z y'all don't know nothing about gen z i guarantee the person who wrote this creative brief knows nothing about gen z i'm like your idea is gonna make the video bad and that's usually when i'm like look can we please tell them that like this does not feel authentic also the assumptions the assumptions that i see i see the craziest assumptions just for influencers in general this isn't really a worse thing it's more so it's just kind of like a little bit irritating one thing that i've learned since doing this job full time people have no idea what they're talking about for example somebody could have done a chick-fil-a ad one year ago and then a year later they're eating chick-fil-a on a video and they're like ranting and raving about what they're eating somebody in the comments will be like i had that same thing it was nasty and then somebody will reply to that comment and say they're just saying that because they're a chick-fil-a partner just because you do a partnership with a company you are not a forever partner when i tell you i see that so much and i don't get like where are y'all getting this information from yes do some people have long contracts yes but you'll typically see multiple videos from them yes some brands do keep coming back to the same like influencer if they like them but nine times out of ten that's not usually what's happening it's not automatic that once you do a partnership with a brand you're just a partner forever you're not locked into talking positively about that brand forever just because you've done a brand partnership i really need people to know that also people the perception in general of the fame of these influencers i once got like um, i was talking about like having a really good meal at chipotle and this lady was like that's because they know you and they give you good food because they know you i'm not beyonce i promise you not that many people know who i am i don't understand the internet is so vast 
There are people who will never see me. Majority of people have no idea who I am. A million followers is a lot, but it's also not a lot in the grand scheme of the internet and in life. There are actual celebrities in life. You think that I got a good meal because somebody knows me? Let's put our thinking caps on. Everybody in that Chipotle is getting the same. I'm watching people in front of me get the same bowl that I'm getting, the same amount of food that I'm getting. They're getting the same chicken that I'm getting. So they just went to the back for me and fixed me a little something special because they knew who I was. No! Also, how could they even predict that I'm coming in to give me... It makes no sense. It's just some of the assumptions make no sense. I see every day, every day I see people make full videos. They're like, you know, this is happening with influencers, isn't it? And I'm like, no. Also because the experience is so different from creator to creator, especially money-wise. A lot of these influencers y'all think are rich are not. And the people who you might not think are rich might be. Like, it's just the assumptions. I see so many crazy assumptions. I feel like I just went on a tangent, but like, man, do I see some crazy assumptions. Mm. Mm, that is so freaking good. Slow down, baby. I run out. Okay, favorite part, since I said a lot of annoying stuff, Ooh. the opportunities. The opportunities are amazing. Sometimes I'm like doing something, I don't know, and I have a moment where I'm like, this is insane. The Panera shoe. Oh my gosh, I need floss. If you would have told me, I don't know, my junior year of college that I would be on set with the Panera's actual team and we're talking about launching new stuff, I would be like, literally, what are you talking about? Like, how, or just having to fly somewhere. Or like, it just... It really overwhelms me to this day. I feel like I still don't even fully grasp it to this day. And I've just never been more thankful. Like I, sometimes I'm, I don't really believe why it's even happening to me in the first place. I was just having a meeting with my managers and we were talking about a potential opportunity and I'm like, why are they choosing me out of all people? I don't know. It's just like, it's, it doesn't always click. Like this is kind of a crazy experience to have. And it's because of y'all. I, I say this all the time and it sounds corny, but I'm very thankful to y'all. Also, the freedom, the freedom is awesome. And the money ain't bad neither. That's all I'm gonna say. Like somebody said, when is the meet and greet? Girl, I don't know. Okay, my mom's gonna want me to have a meet and greet. I don't know, I'm just kind of nervous about that. I feel like either nobody's gonna show up or People are gonna show up and then I'm not gonna know what to do. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be like weird or something. Like, I don't know, I don't know. Do you watch Bridgerton? If so, favorite couple. Yes, I watch Bridgerton. My favorite couple is Queen Charlotte and whatever that man name is. King George, King George. Their story is probably one of my favorite Bridgerton stories, period. It's so freaking good. Would you consider moving to Florida? Absolutely not. I don't want anything to do with Ron DeSantis. Also, I don't wanna live in a warm climate. I can't live in a place where the climate is so warm all the time. I don't like warm weather. I like warm weather on vacation, but if we're just talking about like year round, I can't be hot all the time. I get hot so easily, it's not even funny. It, what temperature is it outside? It's 76 degrees outside right now. If I walk outside in the first five seconds of me being out there, I'm gonna break a sweat. I don't like that and I can't live like that. No shade, no Tino shade to Florida. I love to go and visit. What's your favorite song on Cowboy Carter? Okay, that's kind of hard. That's kind of hard. Let me go to the album so I can really look at everything. It's really hard for me to pick favorite things because it all depends on my mood. Dang! Okay. It used to be Levi's jeans, but I wore it out. I played it over and over and over and over again. Lately, I really love Sweet Honey Bucking. Specifically, I love Tyrant into Sweet Honey Bucking. Like, oh my gosh. Sweet Honey Bucking might be my favorite right now, but then Two Hands to Heaven. Oh my, I'm in mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Also, I feel like nobody talks about flamenco. I love flamenco. It's so short, but my mind has been telling me to sit. I think it's beautiful. Also, she was singing. She was singing on that track. Like, it's not getting enough attention for me personally. Did you ever get rid of the Facebook imposter? No, I didn't. And I tried everything that I could. But here's the thing. People keep commenting on my TikTok saying, they still posting the videos even with this tag. This tag is doing nothing. At this point, I don't really care. For me, even if they still post it with the tag, that means that the people on Facebook are seeing that tag. The people on Facebook are seeing a video that says, I do not post my content on Facebook. So it's causing people to question, is this her account? Like, that's enough for me at this point. I've done everything I could do. Um, and I, I've gone to the account and I've seen people being like, wait, is this, a, is just, is just, just like a, is this a fake account? Is this a fan account? Because they saw the tag. So I feel like it's doing what it needs to do for me. Since you have to bleach your hair so often, have you ever wanted to add a color? I've done every color. I've done so many colors all through college. I was doing different colors. I've done baby pink. I've done dark purple. I've done lavender. I've done baby blue. I've done 
dark blue, I've done teal, I've done ginger, I've done red. I've really done it all, I've done gray. Blonde is really my home base because when I have colors, I have to worry about it bleeding on things and my comforter and sheets are white. So like, I don't really wanna deal with that. What are your most unpopular opinions about social media slash influencers? Social media is having a really negative effect on real activism. A lot of it is shifting from real activism into virtue signaling, shame, and witch hunts. Like, I'm so happy that I'm seeing a lot of pro-Palestine content on my For You page. I'm happy that people are mobilizing. I'm happy that people are organizing. But what, we're, what I'm seeing now is it's starting to focus more on celebrities and influencers and if they are speaking out. Now, before you crucify me, do I believe that if you have a platform, you should be speaking out 1000% and there's no question about it. What, what's the point? Like if you have a platform to say something, I think you should say something. But people are starting to prioritize how they feel about that instead of actually helping Palestinians, which is the freaking goal. For every one post I see about Palestine and how we can actually like organize and help them, I see 20 about this influencer hasn't spoken or this celebrity or this da 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 da. I do get the intention behind it and I get what we're trying to do, but unfortunately it has spiraled into something different. This whole block out 2024, I like the idea of it initially, but it started to spiral into something different. I'm seeing people wanna block celebrities who have been vocal about it for forever. And I'm like, no, people are starting to just see things and act without thinking or researching or doing anything. Nobody's thinking, it's becoming very hive mind. People are just following and doing all the while stuff is happening in Palestine and people have completely diverted their attention from that. Stuff is also happening in Congo, Sudan, Haiti. More celebrities have started to post, which I do think is kind of funny. But then people are saying, oh, they're not posting about it. Too late now, da 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 But isn't that what you want? Because at the end of the day, I couldn't care less about, honestly, I couldn't care less about how they genuinely feel morally. If it's helping Palestine, great. If a celebrity with 10, 20, 30 million followers is finally posting, even if it's not genuine, I don't care because if they end up raising $500,000 for Palestine, amazing. I don't care where their heart is. I care that people in Palestine get the help. So it's like, I don't wanna see 30 videos about them being fake now. I couldn't care less. I'm not gonna follow them in the first place. If you wanna block them, block them. But it's like, we're talking too much and stuff is actually happening. I wanna see more posts about how we can mobilize. Like, how can we get this many people together and work towards this goal? I don't wanna see another video about a celebrity. Like, I don't care what they do or how they feel. I just care if they if they actually put in the work and helped, cool. I'm not concerned with who they are as a person if they're, if they're finally saying, let me speak up and they actually had some kind of positive effect. Like, we are losing the plot. Also, mm, canceling people, at least the way that it happens in this day and age online, is actually doing the exact opposite of what you guys wanted to do. Um, it's making people more famous and more relevant, 1000%. Rage is a powerful tool, which is why a lot of people make rage baiting content and they get so much engagement and so much interaction. When people start canceling people, they don't really cancel them. They just start to talk more about them, which makes them extremely relevant. So whenever somebody's getting canceled, I'm like, okay, like in the next 30 days, I'm about to see just how famous they're actually gonna get. They're gonna get more and more famous. Because think about it this way, when you don't have a lot of haters and nobody's saying anything mean about you, Pretty much the people that are watching you are your viewer base. The people who like you, they engage with your content, they might share it, they might make a video about how much they like you, but people aren't always that impressed to make videos about people that they like. They do it, but not it's not as often. The people who like you are watching you. The people who don't know you don't know you and aren't watching you. And the people who have seen your content but don't really care about it aren't watching you, but they also aren't saying anything about it. Once you do something rage-inducing that people hate, now not only are the people who like you watching you, the people who hate you are also watching you and they're making a think piece about you. So now you have an entirely new audience engaged with your content that wasn't before. And then on top of it, the people who already liked you are now gonna, some of them are gonna double down on their support. So they end up getting more support from the people who love them. The people who hate them are now talking about them and making think pieces about them. The people who never saw their content are now seeing their content because they're seeing the rage content that everybody's making about them. They become more relevant. I'm telling you, like, I don't know if that's unpopular or not. Some people might think that, but that's how I feel. Do you want to have kids? P.S. I love you so much. Um, no, I don't want no kids. <laughs> I don't want no gremlins. Okay, I'm just kidding. They're not gremlins. I think kids are amazing. They're just not for me. Like, I would be a great aunt, but I don't necessarily want to be a mother. It's just when I envision my life, I don't really see kids in it. I see me and a husband and a dog. And on a Sunday, we sit on the couch and watch like Adventure Time. Oh my gosh, that sounds like so much fun. That's what I see. But yeah, no, I don't really want kids. Rank your carbs one best to five the least. Potatoes, pasta, noodles, bread, rice. Ooh, I like this. That's kind of hard. 
Okay, at the best, we gotta put pasta, cause I love pasta. A olive garden fettuccine alfredo? Yep, number two, we gotta do potatoes. Mm, but rice, I love some Haitian rice. But no, I love potatoes. Yeah, we gotta do pasta, potatoes, rice, noodles, bread. Yeah, I'm okay with that. What made you decide to start house hunting? Cause I'm grown. I'm grown and it's time to leave this house. Not that there's a specific time to move out, but it's the time for me to move out, okay? I'm finally financially stable. Um, I'm 25, um, <laughs> I'm ready to go. Do you have a workout routine? Not really, I just have a trainer and I do whatever she tells me to do. I've never been the one, I'm not self-motivated in that way to be coming up with my own routines. I wish I was. If I was, I wouldn't get it, I wouldn't have a trainer. What's your go-to song right now? Oh, that's hard, because I have a lot of songs. Mm. Pink Pony Club, Chaperone, also Naked in Manhattan by Chaperone, but also, Sweet Honey Bucket and Beyonce. And Flamenco, Beyonce, I already said that. Pa Dum Pa Dum by Kylie Minogue. <gasps> I love that song so much. And not just because of Drag Race recently, I saw Georges do a lip sync to that song a while back and that's what made me like that song. When After Hours by Kalani, I love that song. Yeah, then my Ooh Tummy Hurts by Renee Rapp. Cause she did remix with Coco Jones. Okay, yeah, they're, they're my songs right now. What made you wanna be a content creator or create content? <sighs> Multiple things. One, um, it started with the pandemic. I actually started on YouTube. I feel like most of the people who follow me now followed me on TikTok first and then came to YouTube. I started on YouTube in 2020 during the pandemic because I was sad and bored, okay? Sad and bored had nothing to do. I, need, I needed to create something. I'm the kind of person, I need some kind of creative outlet or I'm gonna literally lose it. It kind of went nowhere. I was really just doing it for fun. But when I, as I was doing it, I'm like, I like this. Like, I would love to just do this forever. Like, I wanted to just keep on doing it. I'm like, this is it for me. But it was fun, so I just kept doing it even though nobody was watching. <laughs> nobody was watching any of it. My mom eventually was like, you should start making, uh, you should start recording you eating for TikTok because I think people would really like it. And I was like, actually, I don't think anybody would care about it at all. I don't think anybody would care. And she was right because she's right about everything. Things. And then food content turned into day in the life. Sometimes makeup get ready with me. Sometimes whatever. So now it's just a little bit of everything and here we are. And I'm having a really great time. I love doing this so much. It's so much fun. What did you major in in college and have you went to multiple? I only went to one college, Kennesaw State. I majored in dance and business. I finished my dance major, so I got my degree in dance, but I did not finish my business major. I think I had like maybe one more semester or like a semester and a half left of the business major, but I couldn't do it. Like my business major stretched until after COVID. The burnout was ridiculous. I'm like, I actually hate this. I hate being in school, which is not normal for me because I've always loved school and I've always done really well in school. That's when I knew it was time to get out. So I said, I'm not about to waste no more time and money. I'm not about to take out another loan. College is expensive. You think I'm gonna take out another loan to be in a place that I don't wanna be? Girl, no, I cut my losses and I left and it's the best decision I could've made. You know, these fries are cold, but they're so good in the cane sauce. Or should I say Jack sauce because it's the same freaking thing. What would you be if you weren't a dancer or an influencer? It's a thing where I don't know specifically what I would be, but I know but have to be something creative. I have to be able to, I have to be able to make something. I have to be able to like put some ideas to work. I love to come up with ideas. What's your favorite shoe you have or want? So these are my favorite at the moment. Can y'all even see? Okay, yeah, here we go. These are my favorite at the moment. Next week, it could be something different, but I feel like my favorite of all time are my low top platform dogs because those, I just feel like they're so versatile. I freaking love those shoes. I'm sorry, this is a very simple shoe, but like, I just feel like it always eats when I put it on. Oh, but also the Prada loafers because I feel like a loafer is the shoe of a Virgo. Oh, I love the Prada loafs. Woo, longest relationship. My longest and only relationship was three years from the ages of 15 to 18. And I think I've talked about it before, but we were way too serious to be so young. <laughs> Yo, we were serious, like, oh my gosh. Like, I feel like high school relationships, like that's where people play games. We were not playing one single game, okay? We were locked in for real, like. How is house hunting? Do you have any must haves when you're looking for a new home? It seems small, but to me, it's a big deal. In a house, in the kitchen, I don't like when the microwave is above the stove. I like when there's a vent above the stove and the microwave is somewhere else. I don't know, built into the cabinets, somewhere else, but I don't like a microwave right above the stove. I think it looks so clean cut and so like fresh when it's just like a vent and the space looks so open above the stove, like no microwave, I don't really like that. Also, I like a big shower with a seat in it. Oh, I love a big shower with a seat, I love that. Are you dating? I feel like I was trying to for a little bit. I downloaded Hinge, it's awful. The men on there, I'm really struggling to not call y'all dumb. 
I'm seeing profile after profile of men saying the dumbest stuff, not knowing how to answer the prompts right. The men who are responding to me are the exact type of men who I already put in my profile that I didn't want to respond to me, so I know you're not reading. I just, ugh. They're stressing me out. Like some of them say the most bigoted stuff in their profiles. Some of the most homophobic, misogynist stuff in their profiles. Like I am so concerned for them as a whole. Honestly, I was talking to my nail, my nail tech about this. Like I'm really concerned for them in general because how are y'all walking through life thinking and acting the way that you do? Like, so am I dating? The answer really is no, because I'm not really finding anybody that I want to date. The men are disappointing me. But I do feel like there's a good one out there. It's just gonna take a lot of effort to find. When did you decide to shave your head? At the end of my freshman year of college. I think I've told this story before, but basically I had my hair in like two braids, like how I used to wear it a lot. And I just, I wasn't washing my hair. I was kind of tired of doing it. Like the thought occurred to me because I saw like this girl that I knew and she had showed a picture of her with short hair and I was like, I want to cut it. Two days later, I cut it and I have never looked back. When I tell you, I have not had one single regret in cutting my hair ever. Not even for, not even for one second. How did you become financially literate? Girl, trial and error, okay? <laughs> when I first started making content and I first started getting brand deals, the money component was really throwing me for a loop because I'm like, what am I supposed to do with taxes? What am I supposed to do? How do I do, how do, a lot of research and getting on, the, getting on the computer. How do I make an LLC? Now I have like a financial advisor of sorts who does my taxes and does my bookkeeping. But I will tell you this, the internet is your friend. There's so much you can find because I guarantee you any question you've had, a million people have had that same question, no matter how specific it is. Even if your question is super specific, I guarantee you somebody has had that same question and they've looked it up and you will find word for word your question and a bunch of different answers to it, 1000%. What is your comfort show? Also, Illy and your YouTube. Oh my gosh, y'all are so sweet. Um, My comfort show, I have a lot of them. Modern Family, New Girl. I've seen New Girl season one through seven more times than I can count. Gilmore Girls, oh, so comforting. Um, the Office, I love, I don't stand for The Office slander because that show is freaking funny. Also the show One on One with Kyla Pratt. I love that show so much. That show, it, I wanna say it came out before I was born. I don't know. It either came out when I was born, I was really, 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 really young when it was like airing. But when I watched it like later on, I love that show so much. Ooh, and My Wife and Kids. I love My Wife and Kids. That's a comfort show. I recently actually just rewatched it. In your opinion, what do you think is one of the biggest issues in the black community? Homophobia, misogyny, misogynoir specifically, and not holding black men accountable, which is why a lot of black families have black male pedophiles running around free, but they're like gay cousins and sisters and whoever are like excommunicated. Is that not backwards? Honestly, if you wanna know what the issues of the black community are, read the Shave Room comment section. The Shave Room comment section is, is a case study on the issues of the black community and I'll leave it right there. What do you think your death row meal would be including drinks and everything? Oh, this is good. Okay, definitely oxtail rice and peas. The oxtail specifically will have to be from Brooklyn Beso in, in Bed-Stuy. That's the best oxtail I've ever had in my life. That is the best ox I've ever had in my life. This is gonna sound crazy. The mac and cheese from Whole Foods Hot Bar. I don't know how it is now, so don't clock me. I don't know how it tastes now because I haven't had it in years. But when I was in college, let's say perfect year, 2019 Whole Foods mac and cheese was jumping. Like, oh, let's get a crisp Dr. PP. Ooh, a passion fruit mojito. Throw in some char-grilled oysters from Drago's. So bomb. A spinach dip from Table 25. Ooh, let's also throw in the lemon pepper wings from Table 25 too. I think I'm gonna go there tomorrow. <laughs> Ooh, and a pina colada and a blue Hawaiian. I feel like I'm missing something, but all that for sure. Ooh, fuck Mary kill sushi burrito bowl oxtail. Fuck burrito bowl. Mary oxtail, obviously. Kill sushi. Favorite drag race girl. Ooh, this is hard. Jinx Monsoon. Jinx Monsoon is one of the most talented queens to come out of the drag race franchise. She is so ridiculously talented. Season five is like my favorite season of all time. Well, kind of, I have a lot of seasons that I like, but our season five is near and dear to my heart. Her winner's arc was so much fun to watch. Her improv skills, her acting skills, her comedy skills. Also, I love me some Shea kool -Aid. I love me some Monet Exchange. I love me some Jada Essence Hall. <gasps> Jada Essence Hall is a flawless being. I love Simone. I feel like I'm forgetting some people right now, but those are the ones I can think of right now that I like really love. Any advice for people who want to start content creating? One of my biggest pieces of advice, don't listen to those videos that you see on TikTok talking about algorithm tricks and post at this time and you need to use this sound and you need to put the text on the screen here and move it off the page and da 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 da. It's gonna hit or it's not gonna hit and the best thing you can do is be authentic. All these tricks and this, that, and the third, 
none of it really matters when it comes to creating a long-term loyal base of people who want to watch you being yourself being somebody that somebody can relate to as long as you're truly being yourself i feel like your audience will find you it may not happen for everybody because that's just a fact of life like, also a big thing i can say do watch editing videos go on youtube and watch editing tutorials editing tutorials for youtube editing tutorials for tiktok i would like see people on tiktok say like they want to be a content creator and i'll go on their page and look at their content i'm not trying to be shady i see a lot of editing issues meaning like there's certain stuff where i'm like no girl you could have cut that out or you could have did this or this would have flowed better and i see it and i'm like it's hard for me to clock every single detail for every single person but i'm like a simple editing video would make your life a lot easier and would make your content more appealing because at the end of the day people want to watch something that's like really appealing. I will see some videos and somebody has a full minute of stuff that like could be cut out. And you gotta remember when you're on the internet, people are seeing a lot of different videos. So what's gonna make them wanna stop and watch your video? You know what I mean? At the end of everything, the number one thing that matters is how authentic you're being because people can sniff out inauthenticity. Do you ever cringe at yourself when filming ads? Actually, never, ever, ever, ever. Because one, I only accept ads from companies that I align with in some way. I'm only gonna accept an ad about like a product or a food or whatever that I will actually eat or use and I film those videos like I would film my normal video so I don't ever feel like I have to be like fake and if I ever feel like I have to be fake I will either tell the company hey I can't or won't say this or won't do this idea or we just don't work together because <laughs> I'm not gonna do something where I feel like I have to be cringe somebody asked do you think you could be a content creator for the rest of your career yeah I really feel like wherever the wind takes me like if it, if it lends itself to me to be a content creator for 10 more years absolutely if another opportunity comes along absolutely I, I feel like there's no prediction to these kinds of things you kind of just write it out thinking back on your journey what's one thing you're happy as you chose to do move back home after college <laughs> it's crazy to even say that because I did not want to move back home after college. Like I was almost fighting my mom to the nail. She was like, Shar, you're gonna have to move back home. Like, what are you gonna do? If you don't move back home, what are you gonna do? Your job, because I was working as a server. She's like, you don't make enough to get, like, what do you, I'm like, mom, I'm gonna figure it out. Like, da, da, da. It would not have worked out. It was meant for me to come home because I had applied for an apartment and I thought I had gotten the apartment because it let me go through all the steps and like, it let me sign a lease and everything and do all this stuff, but I didn't actually have the apartment and I had no other options and I had to move home. But it was through moving home that my mom, like when I moved home, within a little bit of time of me being home, my mom was like, you should start making content on TikTok. You should start making food content on TikTok. If I didn't move back home, I would not be like living my dreams right now, really. Like I would not be sitting here talking to you about this. Like how do you get paid being a full-time content creator? Do you get paid by sponsors? This is such a good question because like I said earlier, it's so different for everybody. But for me, I mostly get paid by sponsors and brand deals. That is where the bulk of my money comes from. Brand deals have opened a lot of doors financially. But anyway, I'm gonna see y'all next Friday. I don't know what the video is gonna be. Thank you, thank y'all for leaving these questions because these were actually really good. Um, I know it was a mukbang for maybe two seconds, but anyway, I'll see y'all next Friday. Bye.